Hello, I'm Kana Klassen, Principal of Valley Crossing Elementary School, home of our District 833 Gateway Program for third through fifth grade students. We are so pleased that you could join us for the virtual Gateway Parent Information Session. During this presentation, you will learn more from our Gateway teachers and our Gifted Education Coordinator about the Gateway Program and how to submit an interest form for the 21-22 school year. We thank you for considering Gateway for your child. A little bit about our Gateway Program. Gateway has been serving elementary students in the upper elementary grades since 2006. The program has been located at Valley Crossing since 2016. The program has grown from its original two mixed grade classrooms to its present five classrooms, one third grade, two fourth grade, and two fifth grade classrooms. As you know, our Gateway program will look a little bit different for the 21-22 school year. As the formal GT identification process has been delayed, there will be no Gateway third grade classroom for the 21-22 school year. Our intention is to have our Gateway third grade classroom return back in 22-23. I'm Eileen McElrath, the Gifted Education Coordinator for the South Washington County Schools. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about our Gifted Education Services available at all of our schools, as well as the Gateway Program, which is part of our levels of service model. So first, we do have gifted education services at all of our 16 elementary schools in South Washington County Schools. Uh, Gateway is one of those services available to a smaller number of students. And so if you look at this levels of service model, it's uh, available on our 833 gifted education website. And if you're looking at the PDF that accompanies this video, the link is live here under elementary levels of service. But if you start thinking about your child in terms of level one, um, that these services are available to all students, um, and that emphasis in level one is really on classroom differentiation and personalization. And as you move up through the levels, you can see that, uh, that we add different levels of differentiation as well as enrichment. Uh, cluster classrooms are the services where most of our students receive their gifted education service. And those are available at all of our 16 elementary schools. And that those cluster classrooms, um, including here at Valley Crossing, offer enrichments, enhancements, um, and extensions, and different instructional support for depth and complexity that through the cluster classroom model. And what a cluster classroom is, is it's a regular classroom where there is a cluster of students who have are formally identified as gifted learners and for gifted services in 833. And they have been intentionally placed in that classroom with a teacher that has experience and professional development around gifted education best practices and intentionally challenging and supporting those students. Now for a student, the experience is they're just in their classroom. So if I'm a fourth grader, I'm just in my fourth grade class taught by my teacher. But also in this that class are other high ability and talented learners who are also receiving different enrichments and enhancements that have been intentionally prepared um, with that gifted education mind uh, lens in mind. Now, Gateway is a level four service and how it's different than a cluster classroom where there's a small group of students within the larger classroom taught by the regular classroom teacher who has that experience. Gateway is an all gifted peer environment. All of the students in the Gateway classroom have been formally identified to receive gifted services in 833 and it pulls from all of our 16 elementary schools. Um, it is that level four service where uh, families have said, you know, we really think that the primary lens of our child as a gifted learner is going to be the best way for them um, to experience that appropriate challenge. So in the Gateway program, all of the students in that classroom are identified gifted learners and needing that different level uh, level four program. So for those students um, or families that um, may submit interest in a gateway program um, and may not be placed in that program, they will still receive gifted education services through their cluster classroom at their neighborhood school. I'd like to share with you the mission statement of the gateway program. Uh, and that's on the slide right here. 
that Gateway programs serve students in an all gifted peer environment. Again, it's that level four service, the difference between a cluster classroom and the Gateway program. And we use curriculum with increased depth, complexity, and pacing as the primary lens for designing instruction. Using that primary lens of our students as gifted learners is really what makes Gateway different than a cluster classroom, where who students are as gifted learners is one of the lenses that cluster classroom teachers has in mind, but they also have other lenses in mind um, of the students in that mixed ability classroom. Now, Gateway immerses students in an intellectually challenging community that encourages academic risk taking to develop students academic potential and supports their social and emotional needs as learners. Hi there, I'm Christine Matalka and I'm the grade three Gateway teacher. And I'm gonna start by sharing with you what we believe every Gateway student brings to our program. I'm gonna to touch on a few of these and feel free to read them yourself as well. We believe that every Gateway student has an affirmed identity beyond their talent area or areas, that they see the world through a unique lens, that they bring so unique social, emotional, and academic needs, that they deserve a sense of belonging to their broader school community, not just inside the Gateway program, that they must have opportunities to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes, that they thrive when learning something new each day, and that they learn best in an environment that is conducive to intellectual safety, trust, and self-exploration. And next, I'm gonna be talking about what we believe that every Gateway teacher brings to the program and to our students each day, that we provide opportunities for students to explore multiple ways to learn new skills without judgment, and within the learning process. That we foster students' complex questioning skills and understanding of abstract concepts. That we recognize and validate students for their unique needs and passions. We provide acceleration, compacting, and enrichment to meet each student's unique needs. That we foster an environment in which students' intensities are understood and appreciated. We, we teach students about their intensities and their excitabilities and how to cope with them in multiple settings and finally, that each Gateway teacher should be a lifelong learner who can demonstrate his or her own passion for learning. Hi, I'm Jeff Clear. I'm one of the fourth grade Gateway teachers, and I'm going to talk to you about how we go about meeting student needs in the Gateway program. Uh, we'll go through some of these. I won't read all the bullet points for you, but go into a little depth about them. So uh, the big thing that is really going hands-on as much as possible. So in math, we use a lot of manipulatives um, for students to explore concepts or uh, map out and show their thinking. Um, in science especially, we're hands-on. I would say the majority of the way we present science is through hands-on activities. We do a lot of engineering projects in our electricity unit in fourth grade. The students are actually building circuits and connecting, uh, you know, things in various ways to complete different tasks. Uh, we also focus heavily on inquiry. Um, so inquiry is very student-centered. It's where um, the students are coming up with questions to explore. Um, so again, in literature, we may do um, uh, a lot of activities where the students will generate their own questions to discuss in literature circles. Um, they'll pull out from the text um, different things that they have questions about, and we guide them through all this process. Uh, again, also in um, science that comes up, about two, a lot of times the kids will be super excited about a certain concept and they might say, hey, can we try this? Can we do this? And I think part of um, what makes uh, Gateway fun for me to teach at is being ready to uh, be able to adjust if the students have this great idea to, to go, yeah, sure, we can go in, in that direction. Um, we have high expectations for our students and uh, I think we have pretty rigorous um, materials to help meet those expectations. Uh, we do support the kids a lot. It's, it can be a big adjustment the first um, month or so into Gateway. And, you know, just we share our expectations with the students and 
talk with them and help them develop a growth mindset of, hey, how can we, you know, what can we do to keep working to keep improving? We do a lot of personalization, especially in math. Students are coming in from all different areas and um, prior knowledge. And just because a student is gifted does not mean they're gifted in math. Uh, so we definitely do pull in um, different resources to challenge kids who may need to go a little further or to um, support kids who um, need a little support with that background knowledge. I think that's especially important um, with coming in from uh, a lot of the distance learning that we've been doing. Um, you know, it's kids uh, more and more are coming in with a broader um, range of, of prior knowledge. Uh, we do building into that a lot of enrichment of the grade level content. So while they may be doing fourth grade standards or fifth grade standards, it wouldn't be at the same expectation as fourth graders or fifth graders in other classrooms. Um, and part of that is their unique needs. Um, we, they can pick up concepts quicker. They usually don't need as much repetition and you know, gifted students um, like being with their intellectual peers. They really push each other to, um, you know, explore and, and to, you know, move forward. So I think the big thing with uh, students in Gateway is being with their peers. Everyone else in the class is gifted and uh, have similar learning styles and similar learning um, capabilities. A lot of times uh, it's the first time students may feel um, challenged by their, their classmates and that's really uh, invigorating for the students. Uh, so we really have a variety of instruction throughout all our day and all our units across all content matter to meet the different needs of our, our students because even though they're all gifted, they don't necessarily learn all the same way. And just having this background in uh, working with gifted education and gifted students um, really helps us meet the needs of each of them. Uh, next, we're going to be uh, watching um, some slides of some student comments and parent comments. And this is my favorite part of this presentation because you'll actually uh, hear the students' comments. The students will be reading what, you know, what they feel about Gateway for themselves. So um, sit back and, and enjoy this part. A Glimpse into Gateway, written by Gateway students and parents. It takes a month to feel like Gateway is right for you, but then you don't want to leave. Gateway has opened up my mind and made me work at my level, and I have made friends that are just like me. Gateway to me is more is just normal school but more challenging and flexible. We are challenged to a deep, deeper level of thinking and are able to be more creative. I can really be myself. We always have opportunities to put creativity into our work. To me, Gateway is my home away from home where everyone gets what I am saying. My child has become extremely independent in his work. His Gateway teachers have provided him the tools for independent study and we have seen him grow leaps and bounds in every aspect. He is challenged to take on tougher problems but never feels the pressure to take on more than he can or loaded with homework. My first year at Gateway was probably the best feeling ever. At my old school, I was waiting for everyone to catch up to me and I was really bored waiting for everyone else in my class to finish the question. In Gateway though, some answers I didn't know. It's not really that different once you make new friends. Like, we all still help each other out and stuff. And by the way, not all of us love summer homework in school. We still love memes, wait for school to end, and play Fortnite. And we are not antisocial, so it's pretty normal of a classroom. We just learn extra stuff. 
We can apply our learning to more than just a test in Gateway. Gateway has allowed my son to fully explore his potential. He hasn't been slowed down, held back, or forced to fit into the peg of a traditional classroom. I feel challenged. I'm learning, not relearning. My child has started thinking more deeply. She has also come to appreciate there is more than one way to look at a situation or a problem. Gateway is a different way of learning in general. It's more fast-paced and generally more self-sufficient. I feel much better about myself. In my old school, I felt alienated because I already knew the math and science. No one really had the same inter interest as me. I'm learning much more, especially learning from other students. Gateway is a place where your needs for learning are met, no matter your level. You're always supported and learning all the time. If you need a challenge, Gateway will have it. Gateway is different than our son's previous classroom in that he is being challenged. He is being asked the how, not just the what. One thing I noticed when I switched to Gateway was I felt challenged and people became more cooperative in class and it felt good to not feel like I knew everything. Gateway is just a place for the gifted to be themselves. And one last parent comment. My child has become extremely independent in his work. His gateway teachers have provided him the tools for independent study, and we have seen him grow leaps and bounds in every aspect. He is challenged to take on tougher problems, but never feels the pressure to take on more than he can or loaded with homework. Hello, I am Kira Warden, and I teach fourth grade in the Gateway program. Literacy covers a lot of the state standards and are integrated across several content areas such as social studies and science. We like to focus on increasing the depth of student knowledge through things like literature circles and novel studies in which the students get together in small groups to have deep conversations to compare and contrast different texts that they're reading. We also cover fiction, nonfiction, and poetry studies. We use strategies such as notice and note in which the kids dig deeper into the texts that they're reading. We also incorporate avid strategies, Socratic seminar, and Greek and Latin word studies. Within writing, we cover the main basic genres of narrative writing, persuasive, descriptive, and expository writing across all the grade levels. We also cover poetry within writing and incorporate figurative language. Finally, we have a writer in residence who comes and works with our students in fifth grade. For math, students learn at the level appropriate to their needs, and we base that on pre-assessments, grade level diagnostics, and standardized test scores, as well as teacher observation. All math instruction begins with the core Bridges curriculum, and we integrate enrichments and enhancements and extensions that move the students deeper into their math understanding. These enrichments and enhancements include things like collaborative problem solving, high level math conversations, and deepening of conceptual understanding. Hello families, my name is Carolyn Polifka and I teach fifth grade in the Gateway program. I have been teaching in the Gateway program since the fall of 2012. I really enjoy working with gifted students and helping them reach their full potential. I'm going to talk to you about the different content areas of science and social studies. The one, the biggest piece to keep in mind is that we meet the grade level standards for the grade that the student is currently in. So if a student is in fourth grade, we're going to make sure that they're meeting the grade level standards for fourth grade. We won't go above grade level, but what that allows us to do is we're really able to dive deep into each of the different content areas and then really look at certain subjects or certain um, 
things that they're interested in within social studies and science and allow them to explore that. And we're gifted that time to allow them to do that because usually we can move at a little bit quicker pace in our classroom. So that allows us to give the freedom to explore for our students. First up, we have science. So again, science content standards are taught and extended using hands-on activities. So we really do focus on a lot of different scientific themes and we use student interest to help us drive our instruction. Some of the areas that we will cover throughout their time in Gateway, the units of study include sound, energy, sun, moon, and stars, chemical reactions, engineering challenges, rocks and minerals, electricity, water, the Minnesota Zoo Engineering Design Challenge, Rube Goldberg machines, levers and pulleys, and landforms. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about social studies. So social studies, again, those, science, those state standards are met at the grade level that the student is currently enrolled in. And then social studies really is allowed to be integrated across multiple content areas. So that really allows us to increase depth and complexity for student discussion. And the student discussion is really where the best learning takes place. And having that social studies base, we're able to do that across curriculum areas. The units of study that students will participate in while they're in the Gateway program will cover ancient civilizations, mapping skills, community studies, branches of government, looking at the different US regions, geography, economics and resources, native people, states and capitals, US history up to 1800, early America exploration, colonization, American Revolution, and government. So again, just kind of recap science and social studies, we stay within the grade level standards, but we're able to go so much deeper um, within each of those standards. Hello, my name is Kristen Basie, and I am one of the fifth grade teachers in the Gateway program. Today, I am going to be sharing some information about students transition into the Gateway program as well as their transition into middle school. Our goal within the Gateway program is to make every student's transition to a new school and a new program as seamless as possible. There are several actions we take to help promote this smooth transition. The first is through the implementation of responsive classroom strategies and daily morning meetings. Between these two classroom compo components, students are given the opportunity to develop peer relationships sooner while feeling welcomed as part of the classroom community. This also helps students learn and practice the routines and expectations put forth within the classroom, program, and school as a whole. The second tool used to help students transition and find success within the Gateway program is through the use of the zones of regulation. This is a social emotional tool that helps students identify, express, and regulate their emotions. Lastly, we also spend time learning about the importance of having a growth mindset when we are faced with new and challenging obstacles. These growth mindset lessons and activities help students develop frustration tolerance so that they are able to persevere through the challenges and rigor they will come across in the program. We also work on teaching and developing executive functioning skills that will further support students in their gateway journey. For middle school, all of our Gateway students return to their Boundary Middle School for grades 6 through 8. In middle school, we have a similar levels of service to elementary that goes levels 1 through 4 with everything from enrichments and differentiation available to all to through cluster classrooms as well as specific subject acceleration, for example, our math subject acceleration, uh, which is a level 4 service. Just like students from cluster classrooms across our school district, all of our fifth grade students go through a data review as a part of the math accelerated placement process in fifth to sixth grade. That placement is communicated through teaching and learning and is one of an example of one of those level four services. At the middle school, we also have an additional support of gifted education coaches, one for each middle school. Those teachers support teachers um, of cl our cluster classrooms for science, social studies, language arts, and math at each school, as well as sometimes meet with individual students or do individual planning based on student needs. They're an additional service that's listed in the levels of service under the level three service because they may interact with a gifted learner at 
school or they may not and their support might be through the teachers in terms of supporting instruction and professional development there. We're now going to move into a bit about the process for asking to have your child's data reviewed as a part of the gateway placement process. The first part of the process and what begins that process in data review is submitting a gateway interest form. Interest forms are available on our district website at www.sowashco.org slash gifted ed. They need to be submitted electronically using the Google form that is available on that website. And the due date is Friday, January 15th at 4 o'clock p.m. After 4 o'clock p.m., the link to that live form will no longer be available. Once you submit the gateway interest form, then that starts our process of gathering data on your child. That data includes the parent input you included in the gateway interest form, as well as additional information from your child's teacher, things about their strengths, um, and an additional research-based rating scale that we use to gather more data about what their learning looks like and what their strengths are. We also look at ability data um, using the COGAT, where we look at verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal. And for some students, we might have additional information, uh, information through a WISC. Then we also gather achievement data using previous year's MAP data, as this year we do not have MAP data on all students. And so we will be using last year's MAP data on students for reading and math. More details about the gateway placement process can be found on the placement criteria chart. This is available on that gifted education website, um, that link from the previous slide. And it kind of shows you what our process is in terms of putting students into tiers and then starting from that tier one and filling those spaces in our gateway classrooms and going through tier four. Now, we do have students in our gateway program that um, might have achievement um, or achievement data below that tier four. But this is what we use to, to look at all of our students and look at those student needs uh, in terms of their reading and math achievement, as well as what teachers are seeing from a performance standpoint in the classroom, as well as that ability and potential talent. So again, we start from that tier one, then go to tier two and continue to fill seats in those classrooms, and then tier three and tier four. If you know that your child might have some data below that tier four, please submit an interest form. If you submit an interest form, then we're able to look at that data because we do look below that tier four. This just gives you the place to begin. Now, once you've submitted that interest form, we review the data. We have a gateway consideration committee that reviews the data that's been gathered on each individual student using the placement criteria. That committee is the one who makes a final decision about where gifted education services will be for, for the students in the upcoming school year. Either their current school gifted cluster classroom, which would be located at whatever school your child is currently enrolled in, or the Gateway Program, which is located at Valley Crossing. Please know that we do have gifted cluster classrooms at Valley Crossing that are not the Gateway Program, as it is also a neighborhood as well as a multi-age choice school. If you have additional questions about that consideration committee process, more details um, as well as a summary of what I've described can be found in the, on the website under Gateway Interest Form and Consideration Committee Process. That consideration committee meets and reviews the data, and then we process the letters and put them in the mail on February 12th, 2021. After you receive that notification about where your child's gifted education uh, services will be, that learning environment, whether it will be their current school cluster classroom or the gateway program, you need to confirm and follow the steps in that letter by February 26. If you have not confirmed by February 26, then your child will automatically be placed in the cluster classroom at their current school. Once you've confirmed, we notify transportation and student information so they, they can begin the process as busing is available to all students from anywhere in our school district who attend the Gateway Program.
If you have any questions, please check the Gifted Education website. Um, there are some frequently asked questions as well as that placement criteria. There is the actual interest form that you can submit and a planning worksheet to go along with it. Now that planning worksheet is nice because it goes through the questions that will be on the Gateway Interest Form as that interest form must be completed in one city. You must sit down, complete all the parts, and submit it. You are not able to go back and save some of your responses. So I highly recommend taking a look at that planning worksheet and thinking about how you want to respond um, to any of the open-ended questions uh, where we gather more information about your child, particularly this year as you've been supporting their learning at home in a very different way than other years and have a very unique perspective on who they are as a learner. Once you've submitted an interest form for your third through fifth grade student, you may be wondering if your child's siblings may attend Valley Crossing. Siblings may attend Valley Crossing through an intra-district transfer or open enrollment process when space is available in the receiving grade level. For incoming kindergarten students, information and forms are available on the District 833 website you will want to click on kindergarten enrollment for single grade kindergarten enrollment, or click on multi-age choice program for an enrollment in our kindergarten and first grade multi-age program. Also on our district website is a link to the Gateway Frequently Asked Questions. We've included a little clip of what that looks like here. Many of the questions you may have are answered in this frequently asked questions. However, if you don't find an answer to a question you are wondering about, we've also provided a link for you to be able to submit additional questions. For any questions that are good for the group, we will add them to our frequently asked questions document. You may have some individual questions though, and we will reach out to you individually so you can get all of your questions answered. Again, thank you for taking the time to learn more about our Gateway program and how to submit an interest form for your child. We wish you the best of luck in your decision, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much, and have a great day.